Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 46 in chapter 21. Chapter 21 is about electric charge and electric field. This is still the follow-up problems for the example 11. And then this time we consider this wire with the length L, right? It's uniform charged. And also we consider the P point position at X component. And also, we need to determine the electric field and the position P. So, how can we do that? So, first one, we can see the we consider this wire can be split by small fractions. Agree? And for this small fraction, we consider its length is dy, its charge is dq, right? A small fraction. Now, can you find the electric field by this small fraction? Yes, this is dE, right? And the magnitude for this dE is dQ over 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared. r is distance for this small fraction with this position p. Now, next question. How can you determine the charge on this small fraction dQ? So we can consider the charge density lambda times the difference times the, this, the length for this small fraction dy. So the charge density times the length for small fraction lambda times dy, right? And also, how can you decide the distance r? So we look at this triangle. We find x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. Agree? In this way, we can input dq and r inside. We get a function look like this one. This is a magnitude for DE. Now you can see DE can be projected in X component and the Y component, right? This angle is a theta. And also we can consider this angle is also theta, right? So DE projected in X component becomes DE cosine theta. Projected in Y component becomes DE sine theta. So we write it there. Now it looks the next one. If we want to find the do the integral, we need to replace the theta and y. So you can see there are two vectors. X is a fixed, right? And you need to do the derivation with a y, but there you have another variable called the theta. So it looks like you need to replace y with the theta or theta with y, both ways, right? But a small trick, you can see, in this uh, integral, is it a easy integral for you? Can you just uh, in integral, do the integral easily from it? Probably no, because this is y squared bottom. So there is a small trick. There, we always just uh, replace y with the theta to do the integral, because the integral for size or constant theta looks a little bit easy, right? So the next step is how we replace y with the theta. You can see we can write cosine theta as x over r. Agree? Okay? x over r. And the relationship between y and the theta, you can write it as, as x tangent theta. Agree? Okay? Yes, so in this function, you can get a dy as x divided by cosine theta squared d theta. So from this equation, you do the derivation with the theta, you get this function, agree? And also, so now we have cosine theta equal to x over r, and then you do the squared at both sides, you get this term equal to cosine theta squared divided by x squared. Now you can see, you can input this term inside, and the dy inside, it looks like this one. Right? So 1 over r squared is cosine theta squared over r squared. And then the dy, you can write it in this way. And the simplified, you get the answer. Right? Yeah, you can see this integral becomes so easy. You don't need to do the dy integral with 1 over y squared or something. It's just do the integral with the theta. See, that becomes easy, right? Now, so our integral for the theta, 
we need to determine the lower limit for theta and upper limit for theta, right? So how can we do that? You can see this is theta. We can write this. So this is the maximum of theta. So maximum of theta. So we draw a line at there. This is the theta maximum. So we write it as maximum angle sine theta as this side length, L over 2 divided by this side length, right? x squared plus the L over 2 squared and then squared. So this one, do you agree? This is called the maximum theta. Now we get everything prepared. Now we have the magnitude d theta. And we have dy and we have dx. So first one we do integral for d for ey, right? If we do the integral for ey, you can see this just equal to zero. Because this is a mirror symmetry. Mirror symmetry. Do sine theta with uh, d theta zero, right? But if you look at the ex, you just do integral cosine theta with d theta, it becomes d sine theta. Put this cosine theta inside. Because d sine theta equal to cosine theta d theta, right? It looks like you just need to do integral with d theta, and then you find the lower limit and upper limit for sine theta. So this is the lower limit, this is upper limit. Write it as there, then you get the answer there. Thank you.